to everybody for coming out to the Great Room. The Great Room has been a champion of local music for years in Manioc, and it is a great place to see a show. It is a fun, intimate place. So thanks again to the Great Room for hosting such a great event. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome. All right, we are here with LoFast. Before we begin the interview, I do want to let you know that the 191 benefit, um, the benefit compilation CD is going to be coming soon. We'll have more information about that. A couple other bands that are playing today, Poison Society and Local Demise. Spur Gang is going to be stopping by with an update on what they're doing. And... I will tell you in a little bit what you can expect next week here on 191. Also want to send a shout out to Billy James Emery. He won the Low Fast contest. He's viewing online somewhere in the Midwest. What's up? You guys all want to say hey to Billy? Hey! 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 Alrighty, and now we're gonna find out about Philly's best punk band, Low Fast. You guys want to learn a bit of little song about that? <laughs> The best. The best. Philly's best <laughs> punk band. Low Fast. So you guys have been together for a long time. You've got a 17 year history. Two of you have been with the band since the beginning. We've had two new members join throughout time. We have Fish on Vox. We have Tommy on guitar. We have Metal Mike on drums. And we have Colin on bass. And they actually have an interesting story. Let's talk. Um, Fish Tommy, 17 years ago you guys started. How did Lofast come to be? I still can't put up with him. Well, yeah, yeah, I know you still can't, but um, really uh, what it was uh, is Tommy and I, I had played in some bands. Tommy was uh, just rocking out and loved the guitar. So uh, we got together, we decided we were going to start a band. There was a lot of drinking, a lot of other stuff that went back on in the day. And uh, we got together, we went to start a band, we had a concept, we wrote one song. We had a guy who was, uh, we didn't have a drum set, so we had a guy who used to play the weight bench. He would sit down in the basement and uh, be on the weight bench with uh, some sticks. And uh, we played a party one time. Uh, we decided we'd like it. Tommy listened to the uh, whole, what was it, the first uh, Smashing Pumpkins album. Learned it by heart. Uh, not that we sound like Smashing Pumpkins, but he learned how to play the guitar to that album. And then uh, we've just been uh, rocking out ever since. We found a girl who uh, was 17 at the time. She came and played bass. We found an idiot who was uh, willing to uh, play drums for us. And uh, we've just kept it going live. It was our dream. And uh, that's the nice thing about music, man. You know, you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to have a concept, you don't have to have an idea, you just have some good friends, you like music and you rock out and you have a good freaking time. So, give it up, man. Time's my homeboy, I love it. Thank you everybody for coming out today. Metal Mike, how long ago did you join the band and how did you become a part of this crazy oh, uh, endeavor? 10 years. 10 years, and uh, I didn't even know fish. Hey, you didn't fix my bed. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, I was at a party, it was Fish's 30th birthday, and I heard this uh, music in the background. That and, was 10 uh, years ago. I think it was my 10th. I think it was my 20th birthday, buddy. Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I keep dreaming, pal. But, uh, and then I heard this music in the background. I said, oh, well, who are these guys? He goes, oh, that's my band. I said, that's cool. Sounds good. And, uh, yeah, we don't play anymore because we don't have a drummer. So I said, well, I play drums. And one thing led to another. We practiced in my place. And uh, that was it. I was hooked. Excellent. And Colin, your story is quite interesting. You joined the band about a year and a half ago when V left. That's true. Do you want to tell you guys what he's But he was there when oh, Fish was peeling him in his other band. Yeah. 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 Well, that's 1996. I was playing in a band at a place called Cafe Einstein in Philadelphia. And uh, there was two drunk guys heckling us, asking us to play the fishing song. I had no clue who they were. And my singer was like, you want to hear it? Do it your friggin' selves. So uh, I stayed on bass. The drummer stayed on stage. And Tommy and Fish got up and played the fishing song. And why had a song. Drunk on stage. And uh, that was it. We've been friends since. I was with the band going to shows. And been just hanging out with the band since. Now, were you in between bands when they asked you to join to replace V? Yes. Yeah, I can't leave a band to get into anything like that. It's not a lot of reasons. It's always been playing bands forever, and uh, they just happened to catch me right as I was in a fold between two bands. And uh, I've always loved the band, and here I am. Excellent. Yeah. They have a new CD out. He was also in between Bad Habits. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Who's the other one? Was in between bad habits. <laughs> was? I had a bad habit right here to the right. <laughs> does that include Monday nights? Yes. <laughs> That's a little bad. Alrighty, we'll talk about your wrestling love here in a little bit. They have a new CD out, which, if you haven't heard it, Smoke and Mirrors, it is awesome. Yeah! Woo! I bought three copies. Very good. Let's get over here, bought three copies. He can listen to it three times. Excellent. A good friend of ours recorded this up in Hoboken. Uh, Moonlight Mile. Mike, Mike Mobius. Excellent. Highly recommend it. Anybody looking to report, go to Hoboken. Talking to Mike Mobius. Talk to you. 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 Now, how long did it take you guys to actually make the record? Because I know V recorded four songs on the album, and then Colin recorded the rest of them, so it's obviously been a project that's been going on for a while. We do a lot of quick turnarounds, so it only took us about five years to get done with the album. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we had uh, some of the songs that are on the album we had actually recorded for a uh, split that we did with the uh, Japanese punk rock band called P. Lander Z. Woo! Yeah. They're great, man. If you haven't checked them out, do a show. And uh, we recorded some stuff up uh, up in Hoboken. Same guy. Uh, we went back to it again, and, and he uh, recorded the rest of the songs. We've been writing them. We've been coming up with the concepts. When Colin came into the band, it really, uh, really kind of solidified everything. We were able to finish the album up. So. Was it an easy album to make for you guys? Yeah, everything's easy for us. Oh, uh, wait a minute. We have somebody over here on our right here. Let's sit and for three days. You did all the recording in three days? Yeah, we're, no, you should have taken one day. <laughs> that was just the guitar tracks. For three days over, three days over four years. So, now, who tuned this guitar? That's oh, all. No audience participation. Zip it, Skippy. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> now, Tom, this is for you. You, I mean, you did the artwork for the CD. You're a graphic design guy. Um, did you do the actual cover design yourself? And I did. I, I have to say that I, I robbed some people. I, there are elements that I stole, but I made them our own. <laughs> and how did you come up with this design? I think it's a badass design. So. No, it was actually it was, it was kind of something we were talking about with all smoking mirrors, and I kind of uh, there's moments of I don't know Buddhism, I guess you'd say rebirth, whatever. <laughs> oh, science oh, oh, oh my God! Shut up! Oh, oh, punk is so cut his balls going on. If you want them, it's gonna be a rock. Someone cut his butt. Everything we do is in a double entendre. <laughs> Elements of Buddhism. <laughs> this is what I get. And rebirth. <laughs> oh my god. He's so full of shit, you think he'd be a little bit taller. Did I exaggerate? <laughs> I'm six foot ten in my mind. <laughs> and about the PBR man, is that just a graphic man or is he actually a real doll that's in your bedroom right now? We hope to bring him to life. Really? <laughs> Microphone top. Animated or robotic? And blow up. If PBR will sponsor us. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Somebody get on the phone with them. <laughs> they, uh, I, th I think, you know, we, we, we were like, it's hopeless promotion. We're hoping for PBR to sponsor us, so we just threw it on the back of the album, and we're hoping yeah. they'll come along. That's so awesome. you should have a lot of Columbia right now. <laughs> now you have a bunch of songs that are locally driven on this latest CD. Obviously, somebody in the band hates Septa because the second song is Septa sucks. Everybody hates Septa. When was the last time a Lopez member took Septa? Yesterday. Yo, no one is garbage. Hey Tim, it, it, the stops right in front of your mom's house. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need you fuck my mom. <laughs> So, my father-in-law's here. <laughs> He's getting to see the real see, He fucked Tom's mom. He Tim's mom, too. All right, we can go back to playing now. All right, bring on that. So, who wrote Duck Boat? That was kind of a collaborative effort. Yeah. It was, uh, now, Duck, Duck Boat actually happened the day, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys all know about the Duck Boat tragedy that happened in Philadelphia or not. Yeah, it was it was a real shame. There was a bunch of people. 
who uh, got in the duck boat. They went into the river. They, they honked their horns and went through the city. They got into the river. They ran into a tug, and a couple of them died. God rest their souls. However, when we lived in an old city, they had just started the duck boat. There's nothing like living in a house or on a street, and then all of a sudden, every 15 minutes when you're sitting here, So, uh, we were actually kind of happy that a duck boat sank. <laughs> now, which one of you hooks up with a gal that has more tats than T? Which one of you hooked up with the gal that has more tattoos than T? Oh, we're sorry, her name is Maureen. Oh, oh man. Oh, my God. No, she has all her tats. I was saying we'd say go go bars when, you know, back in the day. That song's hilarious, by the way. That was an uncomfortable question. <laughs> by the way, after this interview, this might be our last set ever, so enjoy the show. <laughs> hey, we have another interview yet, then it's all down there. Now, on the album, you guys all are wearing different rest wrestling masks. Um, you want to tell the stories behind each of your masks and why you picked each one? Actually, where's Shannon's? She thought it was the worst idea ever that we would have a bouncer what? wearing a wrestling mask. <laughs> uh, the we, yeah, we, we, we needed a shtick when we first started uh, because there's a bunch of bands out there, no one gets recognized. So we, uh, we, my brother wanted to be the second guitar player uh, in our band. He went and took lessons, and he sucked. So, so uh, we're sitting, we're sitting in the house one day, and we're wondering how we can uh, get him into the, uh, we can get him into the band. And I said, why don't you just put a wrestling mask on and dance around in front of the uh, stage? He thought it was a good idea. I thought it was a good idea. My wife thought it was the worst idea we could ever have. For the next uh, four or five years, we became known as the band that had the guy in the mask that danced around in front of the stage. <laughs> so it gave us a little bit of notoriety. We really liked it. Uh, I'm a big wrestling fan. Colin's a big wrestling fan. I've sucked these other two into being wrestling fans, too. And uh, you know, we, give a, we give a shout out to Zack Ryder right now. <laughs> Zack Ryder Facebook. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Long Island I Z. So, but it's, it's, you know it. And that's kind of how we came into it. But we did. We, we thought it would be funny to have uh, the uh, pictures inside of the album cover with the rest of the masks on. You take the CD out, and we all have our masks off. So it's kind of where we're at. That's a badass, by the way. Now you guys again have been here together about 17 years as a band. You've had some great event. You know, you've accomplished a lot of great things. Done some great touring. Okay. But you know that the life of a band member can be difficult. Is it hard to continue? And what yes. keeps you going? Fish is an absolute pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> that aside, it's, it's not that hard to continue because, you know, I, I always say, and I, I want, it, it's funny because it's an older crowd who here tonight, and the younger guys who are. Uh, It's, it's, it, it means a lot because the whole thing is you, you start off when you're younger and a lot of people have ideals and they have a lot of ideas and for us that's why we started too but um, you just keep you have re Buddhism and rebirth and all that stuff but, but the whole thing is uh, we're all good friends and some guys join a softball league some guys join Canasta some guys, and it, well, see, you are, I guess you guys aren't that old then. What? So, 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 so some people, so, hey, uh, a lot of fish. people have different well, things. What's Canasta? Huh? Canasta? Says, says, you've, been, you've been to Florida like 17 times, so you know what the Canasta is? I thought he was talking about It's like a card game, game old people play. Uh, 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 <laughs> he's the oldest one in the band. He knows what Canasta is. But anyway, so you yeah, have My point is that a lot of people do, <laughs> a lot of people do a lot of stuff. Softball leagues, racquetball leagues, some people golf, some people do a lot of stuff. But you know what we do? We play punk rock music. We have a good time. Ooh, we, yeah. Yeah, we look, yeah, yeah, punk rock music, come on! Yeah. Once a week we get together and we practice. 
once we get together and we play shows and we have a good friggin' time doing it, and it's a good, it's good camaraderie between the four of us. We're all best friends, and uh, that's the way to be, man. Get in the band with your best friends and have a fun time for the rest of your life, you know? Awesome. That's good advice indeed.